So two things to talk about very quickly before we dive into today's episode. Number one is that everybody was asking for a mod loader mod list. I've set that up. Links will be in the description to the Media Fire page where you can download that. And towards the end of the video, I'll not only do a sort of mod overview where we talk about everything in the mod pack and what they do and how they interact, but I'll also show you guys, for those of you who haven't seen any of my previous tutorials, how to actually install this mod list as well from a copy. So we'll talk about that towards the end. Other thing worth mentioning as well, RimWorld got an update today which was aimed almost entirely at making mods a lot more efficient, a lot more effective. So we're talking about cutting load time down by like 50%. In this mod pack, there's also already included a lot of mods that are based around making it more efficient when it comes to loading. There are mods that actually do help with the mod loading process as well. So if you're worried that this mod, you know, might not run too well on your PC or anything like that, it's worth giving it a shot, especially with the current reward update. So on yesterday's episode, there are a couple of things I'll address first and foremost. Uh, a question here. Are you trying to run the most evil campaign imaginable? Thank you for your question. The other thing is I asked you guys whether or not we wanted to rename this colony to something a bit more thematic, so I couldn't think of a good name. Uh, the most upvoted one, what I can see as of time of recording, we have definitely not... Uh, this is our faction, by the way. Definitely not a vampire here. And then our our community is going to be called... Oh, sorry, I got it backwards. Hang on. Right, let's go. There we go. And our faction is called Please Come to Be Eaten. I like it. It's very subversive. You know, it, it's obfuscating the fact that we're a vampire. No one's ever going to be suspicious of this. And that's the important part. Thank you for your comment. So... Uh, people have also been pointing out I need to, like, dig up floors and things like that as well, which I did plan on doing. I just wanted to get the walls done to start off with here. Uh, hello, Mr. Tapia. What the hell are you? So we've got so many mods that I need to talk about, right? I'll actually pull up the mod list, and we'll sort of talk about them as we've got, you know, sort of not much to do during the episode, as we've got a little bit of downtime here. Let's at least finish off this plumbing and make sure that's set up first, because otherwise people are going to be uh, freaking out. Our colonists are going to be freaking out over the fact that, you know, they've got no fresh water, which I think is fairly important. Or at least nowhere to bathe themselves. Obviously, we're by a giant river and also the ocean. Don't drink out the ocean, by the way. That's good. Okay, so Jilp is fine. Separate bedrooms would be ideal. And of course, the fact that Jilp, our master vampire here, is sharing a bedroom with these two goddamn disgusting meatbags, I think that's that's an affront to Jilp himself. So we're going to build Jilp a massive castle, um, at least close to the prison. These two can be our prison wardens, hence why they've got guns. Now, somebody pointed out that we didn't actually spawn in with any bullets for the guns. That was intentional. I wanted to have guns that were better than... The starting weapons, but I thought to sort of keep it balanced, we wouldn't spawn it with any ammo. That way we have to research that and obviously focus on that too. What is this Rim Atomics button? I don't know, but it looks kind of cool. Anything that adds new buttons to the bottom, I'm a big fan of. Because that generally means, you know, some nice new gameplay mechanics. So, let's get on with things. And then I'll pull up the mod list and we'll sort of go over some of the more important mods and the sort of features that I'm hoping we'll see throughout this campaign. So actually, one of the bigger mods, and I sort of had this idea after I recorded yesterday's episode for the sort of end game, because we don't really have a goal for this one besides just build a massive immoral vampire prison where we're going to, you know, use corpses to fuel our ambitions and all that nonsense. One mod appeared on the workshop recently called Misc Endgame. Now, I'm sure most of you have seen this if you follow the Steam Workshop much. Uh, it's, it's a mod that essentially allows you to... Mad Gecko. Okay, be careful of that one. It's a mod that essentially allows you to set up a... So you sort of know how when you launch a spaceship after going to it on the map, when, when Charlton Whiteston, whatever the hell the AI is called, you travel all the way to the spaceship and you, it takes a while to start it up and you get loads of raids turning up. It's basically that, except you can call everybody to your base and basically send out this threatening message and everybody tries to come and stop you and then if you win, that's your victory condition. You've wiped out all the other people. There's nothing left to threaten you. That sounds like it could be a cool way to end the game because it means we've got to focus on defenses. We've got to have good guns. We've got to, you know, be very well prepared. It's going to be a multiple day siege, essentially. So it's like something we'll have never seen before in RimWorld. When we think we're going to be safe, we've got a little bit of time to gear back up and then they're going to be right back on us. That sounds pretty, that, that sounds like a cool thing to uh, to try out, at least once, anyway. Mal, you have nothing to do. In fact, Mal and Bam both have nothing to do. That mad gecko. Oh, God, careful. Oh, it's like literally just a gecko, huh? That was me thinking that it was going to be like a full-on, you know, like a mutated gecko or something like that. But no, it is just a tiny little boy. Hey, Jilp, do, do us a favor. Uh, could, you, could you take this boy out for me? Thank you. Sorry. Melee attack gecko. There we go. Van, do not worry. Jilp's on it. Jilp's not on it. Jilp, thank you. Okay, I thought we could lose Van then. Is he okay? Oh, scratched by a gecko. That's it. You're done for. I'm sorry. We might as well just turn him into compost already, huh? So... Going down the list, we've also got Prison Labor Mod. That's another big one, which is obviously going to play a big part of this campaign. 
I've never really tried building a prison or, or keeping prisoners around. Because as we saw in the last series, generally what we do is we either recruit them or release them within the first day. I think it's kind of fun to have this massive prisoner colonist that we have to manage and take care of. And then we've got prison breaks as well to worry about. That's going to be very fun. But you also don't have to worry about the fact that, uh, you know, they're, they're useless for the most part. Or just a food sink because they're actually capable of doing things to help out the colony. That's going to be fairly important. Uh, let's dig up some marble then, because Job's obviously a night owl, has got nothing to do here. In fact, a lot of them have nothing to do, so I should be a bit more diligent about that. Right, let's, uh, go ahead and remove floor. So why don't we start stone cutting as well as soon as possible, because we've got a shit ton of marble chunks, just like absolutely tons of them lying around. So let's set up some bills then, if they've got nothing else to do here. So make marble blocks. Let's do until we've got X. What do we think, like 500? It's probably a little bit too much, but, oh, for fuck's sake. God damn it. Okay, let's try 500 then, there we go. And let's drop that on the floor, and then pause when we've got, say... Or unpause when we've only got like a hundred left, or, or maybe even like eighty, sixty. What do we think? I don't want to. I don't want them constantly making too many stone blocks. This is supposed to be kind of a backup job when they've already got nothing else to do. So let's paste that over to our second workbench here. Okay. Now let's also start working on a farm. That's something I always overlook during the early game of Rimworld. Luckily, we've actually started with survival meals this time, so I can afford to be a bit more, uh, you know, talk about the mod pack and things like that without having to worry too much about what we're feeding our people here. We do have vegetable garden mod that has come back again, so I really do like that mod. It doesn't really suit a hardcore playthrough. Because it lets you sort of uh, play very safely without having to go out and hunt. But for now, it's just sort of your standard Rimworld crops here. So we want to get some corn. Let's also go for some rice. Let's go for some heal root, I think is a safe bet. Uh, let's go for bamboo as well. Because bamboo is very nice for making furniture. So it, it's not particularly durable, but it does give a beauty bonus itself. Uh, oh, you know what? Cotton is also pretty good. Um, so let's, let's see here. We've got corn, rice. So we've got long-term crop, short-term crop. We've got heal root, obviously going to be very important. I don't know if Jolt needs healing. I don't know how that works, whether it just naturally sort of regenerates or something along those lines. Um, so let's put down another growing zone sort of in this area. There is fertile soil over by that river, which we'll start building towards, but I want to save that for kind of like Devil Strand or something like that, you know? Okay, and let's turn this one into... Excuse me. Let's turn this one into... Where was it? We want to go for cotton? Did I plant cotton or did I want bamboo for this one? Oh, yeah, there we go. It was bamboo. All right, perfect. So that one is dealt with. That's going to give them a job for tomorrow. And then if they can't do that, they will start working on the... Uh, let's just draft and undraft you so we actually start working. That way they'll, um, you know, they'll stone cut if they can't grow crops. Now, Jilp, I would rather you be deconstructing an... Oh, man, he's not the builder or the deconstructor, huh? Um, yeah, honestly, that's fine. Because Jilp is okay at harvesting, whereas harvesting grown, whereas this guy's garbage, but this guy's better than Jilp at deconstruction. So I'd rather give Mal a more dedicated job when he wakes up, and then we'll let Jilp do a bit more of the, the whole building work there. That's fine. That works out well for us. So obviously we've also got Dub's Bad Hygiene mod. I don't think I need to talk too much about that. This is a mod that uh, obviously adds water systems to the game. You can also toggle on Thirst. And it not only that, but it interacts with a lot of other mods by the same author, so Dub's. Also, Rim Atomics, so for cooling, you can pump water into it and things like that. Don't know a huge amount about it, because I've never used the Rim Atomics mod before, but everybody was suggesting this one to me, so I'm, I'm definitely on board to check this out. We're not using sort of Glitter Tech or Industrial Craft. Those mods were very much sort of core to a lot of my early Rim World playthroughs, like, like um, or, or just, you know, off-camera playthroughs, uh, back in, like, Beta or Alpha 12. Those were kind of cool, but I feel like they're a little outdated now, and Industrial Craft especially is super, super OP with its crazy core drill. We've got more vanilla turrets. I feel like this isn't such a... It's not such a, a playthrough dedicated to difficulty. You've got to remember the turrets are going to be affected by combat extended as well, so they're not just going to be as powerful as they are in the base game. We've got animal prosthetics. We've also got the expanded prosthetics and organ engineering. That's a big change from the previous playthrough especially. I kind of think... Especially depending on how many resources you get and what other mods you've got enabled, that can be kind of OP. As I said, without Industrial Craft or Glitter Tech, that hopefully won't be super, super OP. Because it's going to be too expensive to build them, right? We can't just outfit everybody with a whole bunch of, like, ribs and legs and arms and whatever. I won't go over everything, but I have got a lot of kind of thematic mods. I have focused on getting that one. So a lot of mods about sort of death and decay and vampires and all sort of like... Um, as, as the comment pointed out earlier that I read, a lot of evil mods, right? So we've got things like... Uh, Harvest organs post-mortem, grind them up for meat, feed the meat back to the prisoners. We'll just give them, like, nutrient dispensers or something. They don't deserve luxurious meals. We've got prisoner outfits because they deserve to know their place. We've got things like, uh, obviously, the bone mod that I talked about very briefly. Building Jilp an entire bone castle with bone furniture and bone bed. Jilp lives, lives a very bone life, right? We've got things like corpses being useful after death. So we've seen that a little bit with, uh, let's take a look here. What was it, production? Yeah. So we can actually use corpses for their for their fertility bonuses, um, or for, for their, is that the right, yeah, for the, for the fertility bonuses. So this one has 214% fertility. If we want to plant a crop in there, it, it's, it seems 
like that might be something for some, I don't know, like emergency food. I'm trying to think what crop you'd want to grow in that, because it, it's surely going to be kind of small, right? Um, oh, unless it's permanent, of course. It could last forever, at which point that'd be very cool. Kind of like a hydroponics basin that doesn't require power. Hey, that's a really good idea. If that's what the mod has done, that's, that's a genius idea. You've got things like these maggot breeders as well. Like I said, all the links to these are in the description. And, and we've got the, the mod list available, the, uh, the mod collection on Steam, if you guys want to check this out. I'm trying to think if there's anything else worth mentioning off the top of the head. Then, of course, we've got a lot of other very minor sort of... Um, Search mods, we've got lots of different job affecting mods, like the actual work order being split up there. We've got uh, prison labor, which obviously adds a whole bunch of prisoner tabs as well. There's a lot to see. It, it, it's basically a mod pack focused mostly around the vampires and the rim atomic stuff with a load of convenience mods. So hopefully it's going to be a fairly plum, fun playthrough, I think. All right, that's pretty good. So the only thing left to do now is get rid of the waste water. Now, I'm an idiot and put the pump downstream. I should have put it at the top of the stream. Um, so that we weren't potentially pumping sewage. I think we can just dump it straight into the ocean, right? I mean, that, that seems, that seems like the right thing to do here. Let's go for, uh, what is it going to be? Hygiene? What does Rimfeller include? Clean spill. Cleans up oil spills or napalm trails. Oh, well, that's always good to know. Right, let's find our, where is it? Sewage outlet, and let's just pump it straight into the goddamn ocean, huh? This is technically downstream from our, from, from our water supply as well. And I believe this also counts as the river too. So actually, if we put it here, that's, that's basically perfect. Um, let's put it there. And then that way we're guaranteeing that we're not going to get any sort of infection. We don't have to build a dedicated like sewage plumbing line or anything like that. We can just run it straight through the uh, the main water supply there. Probably not a good idea in real life, but in real world, obviously they don't really care about that much too much. Okay, that's good. Now, as we found out last time, uh, oh, you know what would be good to build? A goddamn water tower, you big idiot, so that we can actually store some of this water we're building. Oh, hang on, is that also blocking that? Oh no, it's not. Okay, that's good. Just thought I'd better double check because we've had a lot of issues with this shit in the past, huh? That does still count as river. Yeah, look at that. Okay, that's great. That's that's really convenient. So let's put our water tower somewhere convenient because we might need to, uh, you know, upkeep it. I don't know how exactly they work. We don't need to manually drain it. Um, or we specifically as the player can drain it. We don't have to send carrots over to do that. So there is a chance, as we found out towards the end of last episode, that, uh, or, or last series, I should say, that these things can become infected fairly easily, especially during, like, toxic fallout. These seem to be infected, like, every 30 seconds. So we want to be more careful of that one. Now, the one thing they're complaining about there, you see the little uh, sort of mood malice symbol? So they're kind of sad because we've got no uh, hot water. So we'll deal with that in a second. Did you seriously have a shower and then complain about being soaking wet, you strange man? Oh, it is raining? I feel like that's a, that's a weird thing to complain about, huh? Let's put down, uh, if I can find it here, a hot water tank. Right, let's get that down as soon as possible. We also need to deal, deal with, like, darkness, electricity, that type of thing as well. But I think we'll focus on wind turbines, seeing as we've got a big open area to put them in for the time being. Right, so we'll put that one in there. That's fine. And then we'll just sort of plumb it in around uh, around here. There we go. Okay. Then we also want to get a electric boiler, I believe, is what we need to, uh, to to get that working. So we'll put that just next to Jilp's coffin for now. This is all very temporary. We'll incorporate this into the prison, or it can be just these two can share a barracks or something. Uh, but for now, Jilp is, Jilp is going to have to share with them until we can build him his castle there. What else do we need, then? So it's the boiler, as long as that's connected up and it's connected to a hot water tank, we get that. So we just need just straight power now, I think, is all that's left before the uh, plumbing is finished. Let's go for uh, lovely wind summons. Or, of course, when we actually get some... Uh, don't want to use the term slaves. Indentured servants and prisoners. We can actually put them on these little bicycles that generate power. I don't know how much they they generate. I can't imagine it's going to be a huge amount, right? It's just something to do when they've got nothing else to do, basically. I'm not going to rely on them. Let's put it that way. As fun as, as, fun as that would be. Right, so where's the cutoff point for this one? So it's the second block from the end of the wall. So we can put that there and it's fairly safe, right? That shouldn't interact with one another. We'll put one there and then we'll build a second one too because these things tend to be fairly, uh, fairly inconsistent, huh? Right, there we go. And then let's go power conduit straight down the back and straight to the wall. Perfect. Okay. That's going to deal with a lot of our problems, I think. I'm going to tack on... How much How much do we have here? Four marble blocks. It might be better to set one of these guys to be a sort of dedicated stone cutter. Oh, we've actually got a latrine and a toilet at the same time. Well, that was very dumb. We'll remove one of those. Um, I was thinking we'll, we'll set one to be a dedicated stone cutter. That's cool. So that we can obviously focus on expanding the base, get a kitchen, get a living room, recreation room, whatever else. Um, apparently we've got enough, huh? Oh, because it's on the map somewhere. Probably where we, yeah, where we've dug up the floor. Okay, that's a cool little mod, by the way, called I Clearly Have Enough. Which, even if it's not in your stockpile, shows you how much you, you could have available if you want to hold everything over here. It's so useful. I don't know how I'd ever live without it beforehand. So let's build a door into here. This can be like the freezer, I guess. And uh, we'll just have the cooking butcher's table in here for now. Or we, could, or we could go balls to the wall and actually build that into a kitchen and then build another one into the freezer. Like, the freezer adjacent to the farm is obviously something I, I like doing quite a lot because it saves a lot of time and convenience. So put it kind of there. 
Gonna need a lot more marble though. That's that's kind of a little bit large for our first freezer. We'll just do it something like that. How oh, that's fine. So we've got freezer, kitchen. We'll turn this into a dining room recreation room as we go. And we've also got some cargo pods. Oh, I must ignore there. What else have we got then? Uh, Paradine. So that's fights malaria or something like that, right? Um, Euphoria inducing. Oh, they're just painkillers, right? Sure. So let's let's get those over to the base. Do we have any more marble bricks, sort of convenient that we could go and dismantle? We've got plenty of steel. Actually, there's loads of steel, huh? We've got bone creep. Oh wow. So bone creep is one of the sort of alloys. Is not really the right word for it, because obviously it's. Um, well, I mean, it calcium's a metal, right? Kind of true. Uh, but it, it's kind of a, an alloy of of bone and something else. I think it's steel that you combine, and then you can actually make more durable bone structures. Because obviously, using just just old brittle bones as a structure isn't particularly good. Of all the herds to turn up a herd of feralisks. Yeah, I'm sure that's not going to bite us in the ass. Oh, hang on. The hands and feet aren't enabled. Oh, because it's part of the better facial stuff. Right, so like I was talking about last episode. Man, that's a shame. I love that mod. The kooky little Rayman guys. We had to disable that because obviously the vampires aren't supported by it because they had their own, they're, they're fully separate face packs. I did try it for a little bit and basically Jilp's picture just looked like a faceless dude. It was, it was kind of creepy, I'll be honest with you. But uh, oh man, that's goddamn hideous. Oh, wow. What have I done? Okay, now, you know what? Let's cancel that. That's my mistake. I forgot they already come with their own little power grid there. I also built a secondary door just quickly to get out onto the beach for, you know, maintenance, breakdowns, things like that too. So you're not interrupted. No, you're good. You're not interrupted, and you're not interrupted either. I think we need some batteries then. Let's go ahead and put down a research table. I'm basically just let Jilp do that, I guess, in his spare time, because there's not really much to build right now, huh? Um, right, let's do that. And let's also put down a chair for him as well. There you go, Jilp. You're more than welcome. Mainly because, you know, he obviously can't go out during the daytime, so we need something to do in the house so that he's not... Is that a hedgehog? It goddamn is. Hello, little hedgehog. Uh, so we don't really want him going outside, and obviously if he's just mulling around in the house, there's nothing for him to do right now besides stone cut, but even then he would have to go outside to get the block, so it's not ideal. Um, how long does he sleep for, out of interest? Um, does he just always sleep when it's daytime? I never considered that. Does he just sleep until... Maybe he just sleeps determined by his schedule? So he's sleeping 6 till 6. That would suck if he just slept during the day no matter what. Because uh, his rest bar isn't going up. So if I draft him, he still counts as having no rest. What the fuck is the deal with that, huh? Oh, God. What was that? What was he doing then? Uh, don't Please don't have a mental breakdown when we've got a goddamn raid waiting for us somewhere. Uh, it's only one guy. I assume with a club. Yeah, it's one guy with a knife, so I'm not too concerned about that one. Um... Let's be very careful about things. You've just got to also remember, we don't have any bullets. We've got these powerful weapons, but really nothing else going for us. Is he just going to wander outside and burn to death? Uh, it's 5 p.m., so maybe he's okay still. Hey, if you could not be on a mental breakdown. Oh, he's going on a food binge, and there's no food for him because he's a vampire. Oh, okay. Wow, that's uh, that's weird, huh? That's something. So you guys, uh, who's got the best melee here? 5.43, 4. 4. Point... Oh, God, this could be a problem. Um, get yourself some wood, boys. We're going to need it. This, is, this could be a problem. Uh, Van, excuse me. I need you to get some wood as well. Yeah, we're going to have to club this person when they come over. Because I don't think Job's going to be out of his mental break. Now, normally food binge, they'll just eat until they're full and then they'll be they'll be done, right? This is uh, this is pretty bad, though. So what do we want to invest in? I want to go for this war form. Assume a colossal visage suitable for fighting an enemy horde. That sounds awesome. Especially with the end game goal we've got lined up as well. That sounds like it could be super, super useful. So we're going to give him the bat form. Which I assume when he's drafted, he'll be able to do. But obviously right now... Um, Oh, they're beginning their assault. Shit, Jilp. I need you to break out of this, my friend. I need you to wake up. Jilp. Okay, we can't We can't let any more time to it. We've given him enough. Okay, Van and Mel. Good luck, my friends. You're gonna need it. Oh my god, there's so many marble chunks just lying around ready to be stone cut. Uh, cargo pods as well. What have we got? We've got... What is that? Olives. For fuck's sake. Okay, it's not what, not really what I wanted. Some bullets would have been nice. Right. Mansovich. Let's... I guess... I don't really know the best way to deal with this. We didn't really get into much melee combat, did we, with combat extended? And the one we did get into melee combat was was, was a other Jilp, who was uh, a little bit of a badass. Right, there we go. So you guys come over, and let's just close the gap here. We're doing a pretty good start. I think it's just going to be rolling the dice here, huh? Do we want to get behind them? And maybe, like, flank them? Because that way they're going to be spinning around quite a lot. Yeah, that. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't know whether attacking them in their, in their blind spot would help out too much. We haven't been hit yet. Okay, Van's been stabbed. Nice, good knockdown. So that's another good part of using blunt weapons, I guess. Is we should be able to get some prisoners early on. You any good? Um, not really, I'm going to be honest. You're not fantastic. 21-year-old. Uh, she's staggeringly ugly. Quick sleeper. Chemical interest and gay. Shooting, 7. Construction, mining, 3. Ah, uh, you're not that good. I mean, we've got a capture, right? It's, it's the whole point of the playthrough is to build a prison, but we don't actually have the prison built yet. Um, what do we do now then, team? Well, that's a great question. 
Uh, <laughs> I don't really know the best way to do this. You know what would be cool? Building a job, a massive bone castle this side of the river, and then having a big bridge into the main prison, and then putting, like, massive concentric walls around it all. That's a good idea, but that's that's something to plan out for the for the distant future. Should we just club him to death and be done with it? Let's strip him first, and then club him to death. Um, take their clothes. Their corpse can come in handy, though. There's so many things we can do with a corpse these days. Um, do you want to just... Oh, she had two knives. Holy shit. She's like, um... She's like Claws from Futurama, who didn't have knives. Obviously, he had, he had... What was it? Clamps? Claws? I honestly don't remember. It's been so long since I've watched Futurama. Just go and knife her to death. There you go. It's pretty cathartic, if nothing else, right? You strange boy. Thank you, Ban. Uh, Ban? I mean, I, I didn't... Oh, Melee skill. Oh, it doesn't have the skill to finish her off. Okay. She's going to have to flail around and stab her for a while. This is like when Theon beheaded uh, Sir Roderick, right? Spoilers for, like, Game of Thrones Season 2 there. We're done. Good. So what can we do with your corpse, then? Let's find out and see what we can actually set up here. Can Jill butcher human-like and he, he won't care? You'd assume so, right? Seeing as he is a goddamn vampire. Be very hypocritical if it's like, Oh, that's gross. A corpse. Oh. How do we prepare... How do we turn corpse into antiseptic corpses? Um... How do we do that? I honestly don't know. Uh, let's see. Have we got anything like misc? Excuse me. I need to know how to make filthy, dirty corpses. Oh, we can make a royal coffin. Wait, is that all already what we've got? Yeah, we do. Okay, perfect. Um, well, I don't know what to do in that case. Maybe we need some sort of research. Oh, God, I dread to think. Um, corpse. Corpse, drug production, hydroponics, uh, anti... Septic? No, nothing there. B body, maybe? Animal autopsy? That's no use either. Let's just take a quick look through the list and sort of see what we've got here. Uh, septic tanks? Nope, we want antiseptic tanks, actually. Oh, some furniture is kind of cool. Uh, drill for oil. So oil, I assume, is a type of uh, type of fuel, perhaps? We've got chem fuel refining there, biofuel refining. Uh, also, another cool mod that we've got enabled is uh, bioreactors. So we can put any spare prisoners who misbehave into a bioreactor, sort of matrix style. Um... I honestly don't know what we need here. I can't see anything at a glance. It doesn't matter too much, though. We just put her on ice for a while. We could build some coolers basically right now, her, and just uh, just stick her in the freezer. Van, are you okay? You're going to die, my friend. Uh, stabbed in the hand. Oh, no. There's nothing to worry about then. Go to, go to bed quickly. Right, okay. So let's set up a, a corpse dumping zone. Do you want to set up a separate freezer for humans? That's probably not a bad idea, right? Let's set up a separate human freezer as well. Joe Pistol has goddamn mental brain because he's a useless idiot vampire. Episode 1 dies. Episode 2 does absolutely nothing because he's really sad about... What was he sad about, anyway? Um, recreation stopped. Okay, you know what? That's fair. That's a good complaint. So we do have t hours for recreation, but I'm, I mean, for some reason, they're just not wandering or having social or anything. But they also, more importantly, actually don't have any forms of recreation here. Put down a horseshoe's pin. That'll keep them, that'll keep them happy, I'm sure. What else have we got? A dartboard. Can't build. We need more cloth for a lot of these, anyway. There we go. It took a few hours, but he's no longer picking out food. That took quite a while. I guess it's only a bonus, right? Because it means, oh, shit, he's trying to get to the bathroom, but he can't get there because of the sunlight. Right. Okay. There we go. That should solve that problem. That's also why he went to that mental breakdown before, right? He was trying to get over there to use the bathroom, and then he was freaking out. So I don't understand why he's not gaining any rest. Is that something that we should be concerned about? Oh, God, a fucking heat wave already. Wow. Very cool. Uh, so it's like we're, we've never changed series at all. Let's put down then, uh, very, very quickly, as soon as possible, if you don't mind, no pressure, my friend, except we're all about to die. Some overwall coolers, in fact, we're gonna have to hook them straight into the grid, aren't we? Cancel that one. Uh, it's too, too many. Well, we'll try one for now and sort of see how it goes. There you go. Tr start working on that one, basically, immediately. Nice, good work. Okay, uh, 21 degrees is good. Let's sort of see what we're looking at here. Yeah, that seems fine. It is still climbing outdoors. It's probably, what, peak around 50, if not slightly higher. We got 40, 49, 50. Yeah, it's peaked at 50. That's good. And what's the cooler looking like now? 24. That's okay. That's that's an acceptable amount. You're right, my friend. Sweltering hot. Awful barrack. Unsightly. Okay. So what we'll do then, just temporarily, is we'll move all this junk from the stockpile into the next room, so that they're not freaking out, because that will add a massive amount of uh, of ugliness to this this barrack. So let's quickly haul all that shit over. Then we should also probably put down like a floor in here or something. We've got plenty of wood, seeing as we're not building out of wood anymore, so it probably couldn't hurt, right? Uh, let's quickly go wood floor. Oh, we can also build... What is this? Parquet herringbone. Wood plank flooring that is that warm. Holy feeling it takes long to play. It's also very flammable. Are these like wood floors that give beauty bonus, maybe? Nope. Absolutely no different. It's just a nice... Uh, yeah, it's, it's just a nice different type of floor. Okay, fair enough. I need the rustic wood because I feel like it's a bit more of a gothic sort of vampire look to it, huh? There we go. That's my aesthetic right there. Boom. Okay, perfect. And then, of course, we can make, uh, just, in, just just for your interest here, we can make some bone floor. We can make charred bone floor. We can make b bone china floor, uh, bone ash, or bone tiles. So these bone tiles have a ridiculous amount of beauty, right? Uh, oh, one? Maybe it's a bone china? Uh, three. Okay, well, it's actually not that much. But, hey, it's still kind of cool because it is a literal 
bone floor. That's, that's fairly impressive. Right, let's also work on... No storage space for what? Oh, dead gecko. Uh, I mean, we'll allow corpses in here for now. Seeing as we've got two corpses that I don't particularly want to disappear. Uh, let's just go down. It's probably probably easy to actually just literally go to the category and click that button. I'll also allow uh, steel slag chunks in here temporarily. Ju even though we don't want to fill this up with steel, steel slag chunks, we'll, we'll sort of dump them outside. It's just more convenient than being this closer. Uh, waste, preferably not. Oil. Sorry, did that say nuclear waste? Oh, radioactive slag chunks. Can we build armor out of that? That would be incredible. And already our wind turbines are blocked. And we're going to very quickly then get Jilp to just build a whole bunch of concrete while he's up and awake. There we go. So that should stop that, hopefully, in the future from kicking off. He's a very fucking quick builder. Huh? I mean, granted, we're playing on speed four, but he is... Uh, does he get, like, bonuses to uh, movement speed? Uh, senses vigor prevents aging, diseases, infections, temperature effects. Oh, shit. Hang on. So he doesn't have to worry about a heat wave. That's kind of cool. That's something worth mentioning. If one of these guys are going to die then from a heat stroke, we could turn them into a vampire. Uh, lightweight flight. So that makes his uh, mass minus 10. So he'll move faster. That's probably what's causing it. So breathing unused, blood filtration unused. I guess by extent then, vampires are much more powerful for combat extended. Because if you're shot in like, as we found out last time, if you're shot in the heart with combat extended, you're going to last all of two seconds before you die. Like it does sort of aim for that realism. Whereas Jilp doesn't have to worry about that type of thing. Could we still give him like a... Uh, well, hang on. Surely that means then certain other things won't affect him too much. He's got 110%, 140% manipulation. So Elder 8th Generation affects that. So is that vigor, I assume, is it's being affected by? Honestly, don't know. Oh, well. It doesn't make sense that he wouldn't be able to eat or, you know, have any blood filtration or blood pumping or metabolism, yet he has to drink. It's a shame I can't toggle that specifically off of vampires, I guess. Or maybe I could. Maybe I could look into, into doing a little mod for that or something just to make it, you know, a little more realistic. The vampires wouldn't need to drink water. In fact, I'm, no, they don't, though, do they? Wait, hang on. He doesn't have a... Th oh, he does have a thirst bar now. Did last episode he not have a thirst bar? Uh, or am I going insane? Oh, well, I'll have to... I'll, I'll, I will try and disable that between episodes. I'll uh, try my hand a little bit of RimWorld modding or at least some death editing there very briefly. Good God. This is why I said these things are horrible to have turned up because it's not going to be long before they eventually turn on our little colonists here. There's only one thing that drinks the blood of my colonists, and that's Jilp. Get out of here. Um... Now, are these boys... We do have the patch this time around for all of the alpha animals and things like that. God, I thought a tapey was going to kick the shit out of it then. So, oh, on the plus side, we can take whatever it doesn't eat. So, these things will provide an actual balance challenge. We're not going to have another Galatross invasion. If you didn't see last series, we had... Uh, we were using Combat Extended along with the alpha animals mod, but didn't actually have the patch for it. So, we tried killing a Galatross and it was just invincible. Like, what, what do we have? Like, six people running circles around the damn thing? And it just could not be killed. This time around, we can try and kill them. Not that I'm still gonna, because I still have, you know, like, borderline PTSD from that. But we'll, uh, we'll be very careful about what we hunt, but at least it is possible this time around. Ah, just what I was hoping for. A cargo pod of flake. Perfect. Just what we need. Not, not, not like food, or, you know, components, marble, marble bricks or anything like that. Some things start off with this. This farm was massively, uh... Uh, what's the word for it? Overambitious might be the right word. I was kind of hoping Jolt would get a lot more done, but his, uh, his mental breakdown there has slowed us down quite a lot, and then hopefully we'll start stone cutting very, very soon. Uh, so this is fine. This is fine. So 24 degrees still indoors. There's nothing to worry about. We want to finish off this other stuff as soon as possible. So what I'm going to say then is Van or whoever is good at crafting. So Van, you, my friend, get to stone cut. So I have also got the mod that stone cutting and crafting are once again intrin intrinsically linked. They're actually removed during the last patch of, well, obviously not the last patch anymore, but a couple of patches ago in RimWorld, the stone cutting no longer gives crafting XP. That's now back to being the, the, the truth. It, it, you will gain experience doing a task. I thought it was kind of a bit silly that they actually took that out. So let's give you stone cutting level 2 um, and actually start work on this now that the farm's built up a little bit. Do we actually want to maybe set that as just like a catch-all job for the other guys? Priority 3 means... Oh, we're not, we're not doing drugs. Get out of here. Well, not yet. We're, well, now that the flake's fallen, we are. Holy shit, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know that doesn't mean do drugs. There wouldn't be a do drugs job, huh? Bogus Trader from the Amalgamation of Nellor. Hello, my friends. Uh, guys, the faction name actually worked. They did come and visit, even though we're going to eat them. Oh, you've got power armor. I take that back. No, I definitely did not say that, my good friend Sullivan. Good God, these guys are heavily armored, huh? Elite mercenaries. They've got charge rifles. Good God. Um, also, these graphics look, A, awesome. Uh, B, that's another sub that I've got that protects a lot of the weapons, seeing as we've got so many weapons going on right now. Um, hello. Yeah, no, bring your bring your geese in Buffalo, my friend. Welcome to the colony of Jilp. The nice friendly, we're definitely not going to eat you coalition. Let's do bat form. What does that do? Oh, well, I mean, I don't know what I expected. He turned into a bat. Is anybody really surprised there? What does that do? He's going to go feed on Mal as he's asleep as a bat. That's kind of cool. So what does bat form actually do for him, then? Um... Okay, the ability to fly with great speed. Oh, so it just makes him move faster. That's understandable. That's, that's actually pretty good. We should be casting that as much as possible then, huh? So who is our social boy? So we've got Jilt with 8.5. We've got Mal. 
Mal Pomery. So we should already start setting up badges then. So Mal, you get the social badge one, just so we know he's good at social. And what else is his main job? Uh, cooking. So we'll set cooking as badge two until we at least get some more colonists. So Van, you are good at building and you are also good at growing plants. So badge two will be that one. And then Jilp is good at intellectual. So we'll set research as his number one. I think this is intellectual. I always go for this one. It makes a bit more sense to me. Uh, it's supposed to be like a tiny research bench, I think. I don't know why they didn't just use like a vial. That would make more sense. Uh, like a conical flask. And then his second one is... He's not really good at too much. He's kind of the, the jack of all trades, right? We'll just leave him as that for now because we know he's capable of doing more or less everything there just to make it a bit easier on our eyes. Right, let's go and trade with Rio and see what he's got for us. Okay. You, my friend, have a whole bunch of garbage here. He's bought an empty arcade cabinet. Oh, nice. We can play uh, Rumsworld. You guys ever played Rumsworld? Got Trauma Vendor. Plants vs. Salami is my favorite. Uh, okay, then. It's got a Skull Mask. We could be the Lord of Bones. That's cool. Or a Carapace Helmet. That's also cool. Piece of insectoid carapace that fits rather well on the human heads. Doesn't provide much protection, but it's better than nothing. Really? I thought that'd be pretty good. Uh, we've also got a bone table. Half-Life. So we've got... <laughs> Please come to be fucking eaten. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, let's go for, and we've got 800 gold, we could just sell them some of our garbage here, like, sell them this, we don't need the drugs, because Joe can't take the drugs anyway, and he's also immune to diseases, so they're fa fairly pointless, um, we could buy, ooh, bullets, hello, do we need 4.5.45 times 39 Soviet cartridge, I think we did, uh, let's take a look at these boys, what do we want, uh, excuse me, where are your, where are your guns, 7.6, oh, for frig's sake, He's got damn bullets. Why can't all guns just fire a bullet, okay? We don't need this many. Uh, speaking of which, that's actually one of the mods we've got is a mod that reduces the amount of ammo juggling you have to do with Combat Extended by reducing the amount of types of ammo. Uh, it, cuts, it cuts out all the unused ones for efficiency, and then it also sort of conglomerates them all into... So instead of having like 4.62 times 15, or 8.75 times 12, or 3.14159265 you know, times 8, you've instead got just... Gun bullet, rifle bullet, pistol bullet. So it makes it a lot more straightforward for someone like me who does not know guns good. Uh, let's sell them. I can't, I want to buy the bone mask. I don't care if it's useless. I want to buy it and I want to give uh, Mal because of poor health. Oh, blood loss moderate because Jilp just drained the shit out of him. Yeah, I remember now. Jilp, equip this bone mask. Yes. Oh my god, he looks like the insane clown posse. This is so good. Fucking magnets. How, how do they work? My god. That is, uh, <laughs> that is a sight to behold. With the camera mod, even better when you zoom right in, you can literally count the pixels. That's, that's awesome. That's so cool. Okay. I wonder if we've got a full bone set of armor. Suddenly, I'm thinking Lord of Bones wasn't far, too far from the truth, huh? Are you kidding me? Jilp has, is upset about rotting corpses. I'll be honest, wasn't expecting that. Should I make him a psychopath? What do we think? I, I honestly don't think that's such a bad idea, seeing as he's a literal freaking gargoyle vampire. Why would he care about, oh, a rotten corpse. Oh, that's gross. I don't want to see it. You literally drink the still warm blood out of the necks of your friends. Shut up, Jilp, you weird man. So, thank you for watching. We're going to leave today's episode here. That's going to be the it for gameplay. I will go over the mod list very briefly, show you the mod order, and for those of you who have not used the mod manager previously, I'll show you how to very, very quickly install uh, Rimworld mods using that and getting the right, correct load order and everything. So installing the mods are very, very straightforward. The first thing you have to do, visit the link in the description. It's a media file link that just has a text document in it. That's the text document the mod manager knows uh, how to set up your load order from. So... Very straightforward. You go over to your whatever explorer you happen to have. I'm obviously using Windows here. In this top bar, and this is the quickest way to do it. There are multiple different ways to do it. You're trying to get to your local low Ludion Studios RimWorld folder. It can be a hidden folder. So this is, like I'm saying, the easiest way to do it. You might have to do some Googling around, trying to find separate ways just to, if your PC is set up, uh, you know, with... with different accounts and administrative capabilities, whatever. There could be a lot of reasons why you can't find this folder, generally because it's hidden. This is the quickest way to do it. So if you type in percent app data percent, that will take you to your app data roaming folder. From there, all you need to do is go back to app data, go into local low, Ludion Studios, RimWorld, and then mod lists. That's it. That's all you need. And then you are good. This is the folder you're after. So as I said, once again, just type in percent app data percent and then go back a folder to app data, local low, Ludion Studios, RimWorld. Very straightforward. Open up the mod list folder and drag in vampireprison.xml, which is available on the link in the description, into this folder. If you've done all that correctly, when you go to your mods folder in RimWorld, it will... Well, firstly, 
Should point this out. Enable the mod manager if you haven't already. That should be very straightforward. Subscribe to the collection as well on Steam. And get all the mods downloaded. Make sure you enable the mod manager. That's actually all you need to have enabled. Besides, you know, remote core. From that stage, all you need to do then, click on this button. And then simply load Vampire Prison. This one here. You won't have all the others. These are just other mod lists I've thrown together. You just click that button, and that will load the mod list from that text document. Now, obviously, this isn't going to change for me because I've already got that set up. And that's it. It will put all of these in order. When you press this button, it will most likely say, mod list has changed. Do you want to reboot remod? Say, absolutely yes, and you are good to go. This load order isn't perfect because there are a lot of mods that you could slightly you know, switch around here and there to make sure they run it effectively. But more importantly, I've checked the dev log after playing, you know, sort of test campaign for a very little bit of time. There are no crashes, no conflicts, no, you know, crash to desktop, anything like that. There are a couple of things that conflict here and there, but with this many mods, that's to be expected. But it's nothing game-breaking. Hopefully, that should be a very simple and easy guide. If you follow that, you can't really go wrong with things. The Steam collection and the mod list, like I said, are both in the description. So you've got to do is subscribe to one, download the other, and bish bash bosh, you've done it. Don't need to worry about rearranging hundreds of mods, as I had to do to get this thing to work in the first place. That's all. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Let's give a shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who have made this series possible in the first place. A big thank you to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Banyal, Blurry Bunny, Sidini, Conspire T, Crazy Pat, Croesus, Danny Good, Donald, Eric B, Escape, Fukuna Vasquez, Fungus King, Gogolus, Harik, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lendine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Musk Ratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofellum, Powers Presley, Surth All the Sweet, Saragom, Toby Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Vacuous Backus, and Zazzy1711. Thank you all for your support, the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making the channel possible in the first place, and I hope you guys like messing around in this mod pack as much as I am. And of course, a shout out as well to Acero, Adam Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, all of this was UK. Arachne44, Betamus Max, Ben Troke, Sedini, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Duncanon2 and 7, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, GDWK Run, Genji Zerko, Gray, Haji Demar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Ice of the Great, Israel, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Johan DeVries, Jessica Smith, John Holiday, Johnny No, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plock, Justin Walters, Lemon Stark, Luan and Thomas, Matthew, Nathan Forrest, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Nixie, Pansemo, Panther Pearl, Smirt One, The Insane Pickle, Venom Meow, Will Wade, Wolfie, Zico. Thank you all for your support. I can't believe we've got a goddamn scroll bar on that list. That is absolutely ridiculous.